713 WTIC. Alden Davis is here. Hi, Alden. How are you? Well, good morning, Ray. How have you been? Pilgrim. I've been great. You're confused <laughs> is what you are. You and I were talking. We're, it was, it's going nuts. I can't stand this anymore. It was going nuts, but it was donuts. wonderful to go. Yeah, we have donuts. Yeah, wonderful um, to do what? what we'll go Ollie there. and Sam say hi. Oh, it was great to go Most snowshoeing. Donuts. Oh, you did? And skiing. Oh. Well, this was, was a wonderful story. I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> you have your thrills. Did you, really, I have mine. did you really do a sleepover? I did spend the night here, yeah. It was funny. We had a pajama party. It was great. Oh, I, I figured you were having a good time. <laughs> kind of like people do during hurricanes. <laughs> so, right. so you did notice we had a storm this week, huh? Yeah. yeah. Not only did we get snow, we got wind. Lots, Lots of, of wind. wind. Blizzard-like wind. Yeah. <laughs> wind is important. Remember hearing about Biosphere 2 back in the early 90s? It was a self-contained oh, yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah it's outside of Tucson there. Interesting observation with the trees they grew. While they grew faster than their counterparts outside, oh, okay. they were not as robust in strength and roots and tended to fall under their own weight. Why? No wind. Be back after weather and sports as we explore the importance of wind in our lives. Here at WTIC, your coaching connection. There you go. Alden Davis, by the way, by training as an engineer, kind of like Bill Nye, the science guy, but uh, he is <laughs> leading climate expert. Okay, then. Um, we'll um, yeah, we'll do this here in just a minute. Thanks, guys. 719 WTIC News Talk 1080. No, actually, this is a pretty good deal we do on Saturdays when I'm on. And, you know, Alden Davis is here. And as I mentioned, worked for Pratt for about 170 years. <laughs> and uh, now, now you're doing, you're going across the country and essentially around the world uh, doing these various little yeah, programs. workshops, building better businesses. Getting big bucks for it. You know, so we're getting it for nothing here. Well, except donuts. Well, well. <laughs> No, wait a minute. No, you brought the donuts, too. So I'm the man. I'll tell you, I'm I'm doing great here. We're ahead. What a deal. All right. So let's talk about the wind. Let's. All right. All right. All right. You know, it's so good to be back for another star power on this gorgeous Saturday morning. And so glad you are with us and ready to go. The purpose of Saturday morning coaching is to equip you with the skills and thoughts that can help you thrive in an uncertain world. But to thrive... You must be able to withstand the buffeting that life can dish out. Today's premise, the winds of life serve a purpose. They make us stronger. Back in the early 90s, a group set out to understand the complexities of self-contained habitats as would be required to colonize Mars. They built Biosphere 2 outside of Tucson, Arizona. Sitting on just over three acres, it contained five different ecosystems designed to support life. They grew trees, tall ones, but found it difficult to mature them because they would fall over from their own weight. Being inside the closed bubble, the trees missed an important part of their growth, stress, stress caused by wind. When trees get blown around and must vie for light, they develop something called reaction wood, or sometimes called stress wood. Depending on the type of tree, they create tension wood or compression wood. This is structurally different than the normal wood at a cellular level. Its specific purpose is to help the tree withstand adverse circumstances, and this is what gives the tree its strength. What a wonderful object lesson for all of us. The winds in our lives, those changes in circumstances, the demands that get placed on us serve a wonderful purpose. They give us staying power. They make us robust, unfazed by challenges. We mature. You know, Ray, what? this week you had author and personality Lenore Skenazy on. Yes. I hope the listeners appreciate how fortunate they are that you have relationships with these people. She's become a big-time, world-known personality. She's all about free-range children, letting kids have unstructured time and, (gasps) gasp, even (laughs) experiencing life outside the cocoon created for them by their parents. Heck, you say. This would be her way of saying, let them experience the wind and struggles. Children raised inside the biosphere will not have the depth of character to withstand any of life's challenges and, like the trees, will collapse. People need reaction wood, and the only way to get it is to be exposed to the winds of life. Coach, that sounds so unpleasant. (laughs) 
I just want everything to be nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, look, the goal here is to be the person who doesn't get laid off, to be the person who gets the promotional opportunities, to be the one selected for special projects, the person who will always have income continuity while not necessarily job continuity. You must want strength and depth of character. You get this by being open to growth and buffeting. Ultimately, this is about embracing the adversity in life. Several years ago, my boss, Tom, called me into his office and informed me Uh-oh. that I would be going on the road to do supervisor training at all our non-Connecticut facilities. This would be a two-year effort with the objective of improving employee engagement experiences. Okay. This is not what I wanted to be doing, and it was not a choice. Yeah, I saw this as a major step backwards. It was a repeat of what I did years earlier at FMC. I was standing in the winds of adversity, a change in circumstances from what I wanted. I could quit, crumble, or embrace the change. I accepted it for what it was, and as a result, engaged with great people all around the world. I was able to develop great material and assessments, not only in English, but Chinese. I wrote a book. I delivered it so many times with so much hands-on experience, I became an expert. And subsequently, this became a major revenue generator when I moved into private practice. The wins made me a stronger and taller professional. Coach wants you to be a survivor, and that means you must outmaneuver adversity. BBC's Planet Earth 2 demonstrates this well as it tells the story of an iguana hatchling on Snake Island. (laughs) Besieged by snakes, this little one scrambles for life as he runs. More snakes appear. It's a desperate situation, and at one point, bam, the little guy's caught and quickly wrapped by the snake. Unfazed, the iguana regroups, wiggles away, and continues fleeing for safety. One final jump and freedom. Wiser for the experience. Coach, the winds are blowing all around me. How do I produce reaction wood and grow stronger? Well, start with the art of possibility thinking. First, what has become immediately impossible? For me, it was other projects that I found more interesting. They were no longer available, and the quicker I could accept that, the better. Second, I was being moved into a new reality. I did not pick the timing or the path. Wind has its own timing. It is neither good or bad. It's just a force. We are the ones who put meaning on things. Chris Argerus calls it the ladder of inference. We all see the same data, but ascribe different meaning to it. And based on that meaning, take different action. Check yourself. What meaning are you putting on this changing circumstance? The good and bad are in your mind. So assign good to it. Understand a new reality is coming to you. Embrace it. Third, what can you hope for in this new situation? For me, the only thing I could see was travel to some new destinations like Norway and New Zealand. Cool. But that was far below the fourth question, what is ultimately possible through this new circumstance, which I did not choose. I could not see the book. I could not see the assessments. I could not see the experience and the revenue potential. I could only see my immediate dissatisfaction. Lesson Embrace the winds. Deep roots and strong character are never wasted. It's our day. I'm Coach Davis. Well, that was a happy story about the little whatever it was, muskrat or whatever. Oh, the little iguana? Little iguana. Man, you, you, you got to go out and watch that. It's, it's right out there at YouTube. Really? Oh, this little, you know, because the hatchlings just sort of pop up out of the sand. Uh-huh. And then it is your worst nightmare oh, God, yeah. with snakes coming out everywhere. Well, you know who else suffers that way is lobster. I mean, it's only like one out of 100 lobsters survive. No, I didn't know that. No, it's just so you'll know. I, it's, I think even worse than that. I think It's, it's a worse panic, Ray. It's amazing any of us make it. 